In this video, you're gonna find out how to grow organic followers and boost your engagement on Instagram. So, let's do this. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, thank you so much for clicking on this video and welcome. My name is Christina. Today we're going to be talking about how to grow your Instagram following organically. So I'm going to tell you how to gain organic followers. I know Instagram is kind of this world that we almost all live in. And if you look at your screen time on your phone, I'm sure that you spend quite a few hours a day on your Instagram. So obviously you're wondering how you can grow and be like one of these influencers with thousands or hundreds of thousands, if not even millions of followers. So today I'm going to tell you how to gain organic followers, which is basically real followers because we know there's obviously a lot of bots out there and a lot of software that people use to gain artificial following that in the long run doesn't really help us and it ultimately only hurts you and Instagram has gotten a lot smarter these days at monitoring that and if they do see that you are you know doing these fishy weird sketchy little maneuvers they may ban you or block you or suspend you or ultimately shut down your Instagram. So you don't necessarily want to be doing those things. A lot of people got away with that back in the day, but you can't anymore. <laughs> Instagram is on top of their game. Ultimately though, just to say, it's not that easy to grow nowadays. I'm just being 100% transparent and very honest, especially ever since Facebook bought out Instagram they've just been focusing more and more on ad revenue so they're not really necessarily concerned about your growth they care they care about the growth in their pockets of their wallets and the money coming in from ad revenue so that being said there are still ways you can grow um, obviously the people that got on the platform years ago and it just began they were lucky and they took advantage of it and they were able to grow quickly because virality was still kind of a thing and it was a lot easier to go viral and easier to grow and just by using simple hacks they were able to you know skyrocket to millions of followers so those people are very lucky if you're starting your Instagram today for your personal reasons or for a business it's not as easy anymore it's not as easy anymore, but it is possible. So oh, let's take a seat back and you know, figure this out together. I have over 400,000 followers on Instagram, but that being said, it's not easy even for me, especially now the engagement rates have gone down, way down. So they're just making it more and more difficult. Instagram's only showing your post to 10% of your audience until you do certain things and then it's like oh, okay this is cool it's popular i'm going to show it to some more people so they do kind of a, a test flight with your posts before they show it to everybody whereas before they used to show it to everybody and it was awesome but you know you have to adjust um you know swim or sink type of situation here with instagram but we're gonna swim yes so like i said it's not even easy for someone with a following like mine, I find myself having to jump through hoops to get my engagement up. It's just honestly, it's not like it used to be and it takes a lot of work. What I want to say before I jump into my tips is that it's not something to be taken lightly. Growing an Instagram, it takes a lot of consistency and patience and hard work. I'm just being brutally honest here. You can't expect an overnight success. You can't expect to just skyrocket um, unless of course a video does go viral or a picture does go viral but those cases are a lot less likely these days unless maybe you do all of this in a combination for a while and you will definitely see success you have to treat this like a business you have to treat your Instagram page like a business those people that are succeeding today it's not because they're just you know lucky it's because they're putting in the hard work they're working on it every day, they're being consistent and they're patient with themselves and they're constantly bettering themselves and that is what it's about. 
that Instagram does take work. You can't expect to post a, you know, a crappy picture, to be honest, and expect results. So if you are looking to boost your business or your personal page, blog, whatever it is you are promoting, selling, or just living, maybe it's a personal blog, I'm gonna tell you how to grow organic followers and boost your engagement. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing is content. I know that everybody talks about this. I'm sure you've seen multiple videos and everybody always says content, but they're saying that for a reason. It's because it honestly is the most important aspect and thing about growing your Instagram page. Because if you don't have good content, nobody's gonna wanna follow you. If you, they don't have pictures that they like or a feed that they like, nobody's gonna wanna follow you nowadays. Our standards have gone up and followers are so picky nowadays. They only wanna follow your page if it's curated and beautiful and has all these glorious features and it all looks, you know, cohesive in a sense. So unless you're a super celebrity that can just post, you know, a picture of a trash bag or them sitting on the loo um, and get millions of likes, you're more than likely gonna have to put some effort into your content. So I suggest planning your content and trying to think of ideas and what you wanna post and you definitely wanna have some kind of cohesiveness to it so you definitely want people to come to your page and know what you're about if you're a fashion blogger if they go to your instagram page you want to have pictures and outfits you don't want to have you know pictures of nfl players or you know different different sports and whatnot um, you want to be able to tell a story and for people to understand it in like five seconds after opening your page so make sure it's cohesive and on top of that you want quality content so doesn't mean you have to use an expensive camera or you know go to a photography class or anything it just means that take quality pictures you can take quality pictures on your iPhone or Android nowadays but they have such good quality photos I take the majority of my photos on my phone because I'm always on the go so it's just the easiest thing to whip out and the pictures turn out great with a little bit of editing or filters you can make phenomenal content Content is key, so get on there and make some beautiful photos because I know you can. Another thing that goes along with content is research. You want to research your competitors. You want to see what they're posting, which posts of theirs are performing the best. And the easiest thing to do is to copy them or do something similar. So if you see that white outfits perform very well, maybe take some pictures in some white outfits. If you have a cooking page, for instance, and you see people like to see um, fast forwarded videos of them preparing the actual meal, maybe you should do that as well and post that on your page. Um, so just, it's really easy nowadays to see what people like, just see what shows up even on your explore page because it's now very personalized and it's basically Instagram feeding you the things that you like and the things that you have clicked on and liked and see and like to look at. So look at that and see what pops up and see what you're drawn to. And more than likely that's what other people are drawn to as well. So once you know what you're drawn to, you can then copy that or you know do something similar and that will help you grow in the long run as well in producing good content that everybody likes and is drawn to. The next thing I want to talk about is consistency. Consistency is super key, especially nowadays. You can't really get away with posting once a week anymore and expecting to be where you were. Instagram's going to look at you and be like, okay, well, she really doesn't care. She's not here. She's not taking this seriously. So we're just going to drop her down to the bottom of the chain which sucks, which really does, because sometimes you don't have, you know, all the time in the world every day to make this quality, super great content that's cohesive with your feed to put it out there. But you have to try. That's why I said planning in advance is key also, because you can just have it all planned out, you can have it automated too. You want to post every day, and some people post two or three times a day, but once a day is definitely key. You have to post daily. Consistency is super key, and I'm at fault at that too. Sometimes I'm lazy and I don't wanna post, but if I want to grow, I have to. You have to, you know, plow 
through the weeds and show yourself as this beautiful Instagram flower, this page that is amazing. And the more you hammer at the nail, the more it will get through to Instagram that you are something that is worth sharing. Not only do you want to be consistent, you also want to add value. So there are a lot of, there's a lot of Instagram pages out there that don't really add any value. And yes, some of them have a lot of followers, but I don't know. I don't know. Some of them just got lucky. Some of them are just so beautiful that they don't need to add value. Or maybe somebody's just so cool that they don't need to add value. Or they're, if they're a celebrity, obviously they don't need to add any value. But a good way if you're trying to grow your page is to add value. Meaning that what do you know well? What do you know how to do well or what can you share with the world? What can somebody else learn from you? So if you have a cooking page and you want to start a cooking blog, a good way to add value is to obviously show recipes. So, and actually not just show it, but maybe write out the whole recipe in the caption. Therefore, people will see how it's done and then they will have the recipe down below for them to actually use with all the ingredients. You are adding value this way. Somebody knows that if they come to your page, they're gonna learn something useful and practical that they can take with them into their world. If you're a photographer, you can add tips and tricks and you know every now and again throw in a tutorial. Therefore, people will know that they are going to learn something from you. You're not just throwing something out and being like, oh, look at this cool, 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 cool photo I posted. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, and a lot of people, they sell, you know, fitness programs and eBooks. They just have, you know, free things for people to download. And it doesn't have to be necessarily some trick or trade. You can also add value by just being very insightful. In your captions, you can write things that are meaningful and insightful and something that people can learn from your own personal experiences. So just be open with your audience and they will respond in the same way. The more they get to know the real you, the more value you add to their life. Just think about it yourself. What are the accounts that you are drawn to? Is it the people that you have no idea who they are and what they're doing and what they have to add to your life? Or is it the ones that share a lot and um, give you insightful information and ones that you actually learn from. Just think about why you personally would click the follow button and try to do the same. Just try to pay attention to that next time you do follow somebody. Just think, why am I following this person? It's probably because they're somehow adding value to your life and you are learning something from them or even if aesthetically you just like how it all looks, that is still value because they're putting in a lot of hard work to make it look a certain way and inspire you. So going along with that, you definitely want to share a lot about yourself and even to the point where you're kind of oversharing those things that you think that nobody really cares about, they actually do. I feel like the times that I really share the moments in my life that I think are insignificant, I get the most feedback. Um, sometimes I'm like, oh God, this product is so gross, oh God, I never want to use this again. I prefer this and you know, people, I may not necessarily think that anybody cares about what product I like, but if they look up to you, they do care. So you do want to share and overshare, think about your thoughts, your opinions, how you feel about, you know, the things going on in the world or politics or celebrities or certain trending topics on the news or global warming or how you love animals. People will connect with you more if they find something that you have a like with them inside of yourself. So the more you share and overshare, <laughs> the more chances you give people to fall in love with you. Um, and that ultimately what a follow is. They love you, they heart you, and they're willing to put hearts, likes on your photos and videos on Instagram. So leading up to my next tip, a good way to share and overshare is to be very active on stories. So not only are you posting content once a day on your main feed, you have to try and post stories every day. I would recommend posting at least six to 10 stories 
every single day and this really gives you a chance to overshare and show people who you are, what you like, what you're doing and that way they will be more drawn into who you are and are more likely to stay following you. Um, so, but not only does that help you as a brand, it also tells Instagram that you are very active, you are a good Instagram page for them to push. So you wanna be active on your feed, you wanna be active on your stories, you wanna go live every here and there, because actually when you go live, it boosts it to the front if you notice you'll be at the very top and more than likely it'll then boost your stories as well so people will see you they'll be reminded of you and if they check out your live you might be boosted in their account as people who they are viewing as a whole and therefore your engagement will go up as well so the more features you are using on instagram the more it helps your growth and your engagement alike i would also recommend using the igtv feature instagram is really trying to push that so if you do have longer clips that you would like to share I would recommend putting those on IGTV and just the more active and the more of the features you use on the platform, the better off you will be ultimately because Instagram wants to see that you are active and consistent and that you're there like bam, 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 like lightning. Um, <laughs> another feature is the highlights. It's the little circles above your feed where you can make little albums of your stories. And that's another good way to kind of separate your likes and interests. Um, I know I've separated mine up into certain things. I have an online clothing store, so I have a section for my online clothing store. I have a section that were for my wedding that I posted some stuff. I have like food, my dog, my life. Um, you know, little aspects so people, if they just want to see a certain thing about me, they can just click on those highlights and literally just get the content that they want. So that's also a very good feature um, to use so that you can be more active and all of it and ultimately grow your following. Before I jump onto the next tip, I just wanna say it's no longer very important to have hundreds of thousands of followers. There's a new niche called micro-influencers and those are influencers that have anywhere from 3,000 maybe to 10,000 followers and advertisers are now going towards these influencers because they are very organic. Their following is organic and they know that the people that are following them are truly trusting them. And a lot of these accounts have really good engagement. In growing your Instagram, you can definitely become one of these micro-influencers. And a lot of these micro-influencers are doing better than the bigger pages because advertisers and companies and brands are all about the organic um, marketing that they can get. And they know that they're for sure gonna get organic with smaller accounts. And a lot of the time, if you notice, the smaller accounts do actually add more value. They tend to be people that are very professional, people that have actually succeeded in life. They, it's people who have things to share and knowledge and experience. A lot of the people with these big accounts, they got their following from different gimmicks or something stupid that they've done, or maybe they posted a funny video or, you know, animal video or they literally just got popular off of a trend or something very silly so at the end of the day they don't necessarily have much value they're just popular because they're popular um, and so people look to them for advice but in my opinion a lot of the time they don't even have quality advice to give and I'm not trying to bash on anybody there are obviously big accounts and people who are genuine and amazing and knowledgeable and know what they're talking about but i'm just talking about certain people that don't have value but they have a huge account so marketers try to go for the smaller accounts because they know that's where they're going to get the quality marketing so there is chance for you yet if you're worried about how are you how am i ever going to get so many followers you don't have to anymore you can do very well with a smaller Instagram page. Okay, let's move on to my next tip. So, not only do you want to use all of the features on Instagram, you also want to engage with your followers and your non-followers. I know a lot of people have used automated follow, unfollow, like, comment, growth software. 
software, software. <laughs> and honestly, it's not that good to use those anymore because Instagram will notice that you're using it all the time and they might ban you or shadow ban you. I don't know if shadow banning is a real thing, but they definitely will diminish the amount of exposure your page gets. So it's, their, it's kind of their way of punishing you for your cheating, <laughs> if you will. But if you do engage in an organic way, it will actually help you. By this, I mean, if there are people commenting on your picture, you want to respond back. And don't just respond like, hey, thanks, awesome, love you. If you write quality responses and maybe that draws in more attention or engagement, you're ultimately gonna boost your engagement. You want to respond back thoroughly. If someone's like, wow, you look so pretty in this picture, you might wanna say, thank you, I checked out your page and you're so beautiful as well. I love your hair color, Who? where do you get it done? Something like that. That's something that's gonna draw the other person back into a conversation. And the more conversations that you can accumulate on your posts, the better your post will do and your page will do because ultimately it's about having a conversation. It's not just about throwing something out there against the wall and having nothing happen with it. You want to encourage conversation. That's how you grow engagement. So not only do you want to respond back to your comments, you want to also like other people's pictures that you follow and write engaging comments on their um, posts as well because that will encourage them to ultimately comment on your pictures as well. I know from the people I follow, if they're commenting on my photos, I'm more than likely commenting on their photos as well. And it's a give and give type of relationship and you know, if somebody does something nice for you, you wanna return the favor. So it's that type of mentality that you have to remember and try to tune into. You can also do this with people that aren't following you and people you aren't following. If you go into the niches that you like and maybe you have a couple influencers that you look up to. So say you have someone you look up to, you go on their page, you see who's liking their pictures or commenting on their pictures. Maybe click on a few of those people because those are people that could become your followers because they like a person that's in your similar niche. So once you click on their page, maybe like a couple of their photos or go and leave a thoughtful comment. They will then check out who you are and go to your page and possibly follow you because they like your content because it's in a similar niche of somebody else they're following, meaning they like the subject area and they're very interested. Definitely engage and have conversations on Instagram. Okay, my next tip is captions. You wanna have thoughtful captions and honestly, the longer they are, the better. Unless you're a super, super pop star, <laughs> you can't necessarily afford to just leave a smiling emoji on your caption because you want to grow. So, here's the thing. Instagram will help boost your post the more eyeballs it gets on it and the longer the retention time is. So the more time people spend looking at your picture, maybe zooming in and out, checking it out, reading your comment, all of that is logged in Instagram and that tells Instagram that people are liking this post and that they should share it to more people. So the way you do this is by writing engaging captions. So you wanna, this is where you add your value. <laughs> so you write something thoughtful, insightful, maybe ask a question, a call to action. This will have people responding and leaving more comments and maybe more likes because you have a clear call to action. You ask people a question to leave their ideas after what you wrote. And I would also recommend throwing in some emojis there. It helps break up your text if it's a long text and maybe put in your top keywords at the very top in the title portion of your caption. If you're gonna write a caption about self-help or something like that, maybe capitalize self-help and then continue on with your story or life experience and then conclude it with a question like who else thinks self-care is very important or anyone out there have any other tips for self-care it's about starting a conversation and continuing that conversation and by providing engaging captions that are long 
and insightful, that's exactly what you're going to do. So you also, going off of that, you also want to promote your engagement long term. Yes, it is very important in the first 30 minutes to an hour, um, how many likes and comments and saves and shares that you get. It is very important, but that's not all of it. Instagram wants to see that people are constantly coming back they don't, because if they see that you're just getting engagement in the first 30 minutes or so, it might feel slightly fake, like you used it some kind of like you use some kind of software to boost that just for that time period. Maybe you bought likes or something like that. But if you have consistent engagement rolling in, maybe over the period of 24 hours or 48 hours, um, or even there's still people coming back and seeing your post a week later, um, that really shows Instagram that they should boost this. So the way you do this is you remind people about your post. So if you posted a post yesterday and it got great engagement and you're proud of that post, Maybe the following day post a story about that post and be like, hey guys, if you haven't yet checked out my post from yesterday, it has a lot of insightful information about self-love and care. I think it could be very useful to those in a dark time, maybe something like that, and it'll draw more people in to check out that post. So, meaning don't forget about the posts that you that you posted a day ago or a week ago, the more engagement you can get on all of your posts. It's not necessarily just about the most recent one. The more it's gonna help increase your engagement and grow your Instagram page. And don't be afraid to ask people. You can ask in your stories or even in your caption. You can ask them to like your photo, share it, comment, uh, save it. Those are all very, very important. The more of those actions you get, the more Instagram will boost your picture. Sometimes people forget, they're scrolling through and they don't think about it, but when they see that trigger, they might actually do it. So what does it hurt to ask? Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> oh my goodness guys, I feel like I have been talking for ever now and I've actually only made it through about half or one third of the way through my tips. So I think I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna make a separate video just to break it up because this one's getting very long. I think this is a really great start and if you do wanna learn about my other tips, definitely look out for the next one that I'm going to make. Um, I really hope this helps you guys and I will be answering any questions in the comments below. So feel free to ask me any questions about anything that I talked about today. I'm really eager to hear your feedback and if this helps you and if you found this insightful, I would love to know. Also, if you would like to see more social media videos, I'd love to post some more for you. I have a lot that I have learned about the subject in my time being on there. <laughs> but yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I am Christina and I will see you guys next time. But if you like this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you guys don't miss any more videos. I will be very grateful to those of you that do and those that already are subscribed. Hello and welcome back and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Yes. But yeah, guys, that is it for today. I'm out. I hope everybody has an amazing day.